Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, starring award-winning real estate coaches and number one international best-selling authors, Tim and Julie Harris. Real Estate Coaching Radio is the nation's number one daily radio show for realtors who demand authentic real-time coaching. Get ready for fluff-free, unfiltered, full-strength honesty about what's truly working to get you into action, helping others, and making money now in today's real estate market. Now to our hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. Three, two, one, and we are back. Hey, happy Monday, June the 8th. Um, So we had a really great podcast yesterday, our Sunday podcast. The Sunday podcast where Julie and I are completely unhinged, unscripted, no particular agendas, talking about pretty much whatever pops to our minds. Um, And yesterday we ended up telling you guys stories about our travels and running into different celebrities and uh, just, you know, craziness, really. So if you want a nice break from your reality, that's what our Sunday show is. I encourage you to go listen. And uh, the feedback we get on the Sunday show is actually interesting. I am pretty sure that the Sunday podcast is actually attracting a different set of people to listen that are non-real estate agents. That's where I think that show is going. So yeah, I'd love your feedback on it. If you guys find any you know, crazy information or just, I mean, we talked about, what did we talk about yesterday? Aliens and radio signals from a distant gal- galaxy. <laughs> know, all sorts of things. Uh, well, and I do have some feedback that you might be interested in, and I can make this into a coaching moment, as a matter of fact. Oh, boy. One of the questions we've been getting, I've had it twice today, is, uh, hold on, you guys live in a hotel? Because we mentioned the Ritz-Carlton, but a lot of agents don't, a lot of listeners, people in general, don't realize that uh, the Ritz-Carlton, and there's a couple of other brands that do this, have actual neighborhoods, multiple neighborhoods, where we live is 1,300 acres, and there's probably, what, seven or eight different neighborhoods. It's 1,600 it, it, acres, isn't it? 1,300. Oh, 1,300. You know, doesn't yeah. matter. Give you or know, take 300. Give or take. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, you know, of course, the ocean is right there. There is no traditional hotel building, no. as you might imagine. And in fact, there's lots of different versions of this where people are individual owners, but some of the units are managed by the Ritz-Carlton, not ours, but that's, that is a form of ownership that some of you guys don't know about. And it's sort of a combination of uh, you know, primary residence or second, third, fourth, fifth home, whatever the case may be, plus Airbnb idea, you know, it may or may not be managed by the Ritz. And it's, it's sort of a, a combination of ways to monetize a property for some and to just simply live in it for others. There's normal, quote, normal neighborhoods here, too. Right. Well, normal as much as normal can be inside the Ritz. But uh, yeah. to Julie's point, when you guys stay at a, a hotel uh, like this one, oftentimes the room you're staying in is privately owned. And to Julie's point about being like Airbnb, so the Ritz in this particular case, they don't own this property. This, is, this property is owned by... Um, a family basically and they own other properties all over the world so the way it operates is you basically have um, the Ritz as a license you you license the Ritz to run your property and so then you have to build it out to specific standards and the rest of it so that's where we live and um, there are in season a lot of hotel guests but they're only on a particular part of the property where the hotel is concentrated if you guys want to know more about this because it is fascinating to be honest with you there's only so it for the ritz carlton i believe there's only six properties like this uh, five or six yeah yeah in the uh, world in the world i think one's in thailand yeah i, I can't remember all of them and this is considered like a six-star resort yeah I mean, so the whole it's thing. different than you have the ritz carlton hotels that most people are familiar with but this is called the ritz carlton reserve properties right and that's what gives you this different type of uh, ownership. So, yeah, so just go Google it. It's quite it's fascinating. Cool. Well, we just learned about it about you know two years yeah. ago. And so. you don't have to have the Ritz manager property. You can just no. buy a house and live in it. Uh, but they have lots of different options. And I just thought it was interesting because maybe we make the assumption that they know what the heck we're talking about. Um, but for some of you, you live near properties like this. I know that Omni is one that does that. I uh, think there's two there's several brands that operate that way then we're not talking about timeshares either people this is completely different so just a little educational moment since it was coming up yeah well okay so let's talk about so today we're going to go over some news headlines and we've got quite a few of them and I want to uh, start out by saying I'm really thrilled to get so much wonderful feedback and how uh, I'm Julie and I are so when we get an email or a text or a comment someplace where you're showing appreciation and you're you know, frankly, showing gratitude for something you learned from our podcast or certainly our coaching program. 
Trust me when I tell you we appreciate that because what it does is encourages other people to show appreciation, not just towards us, but just towards things in general. And if you really want to essentially trick your mind away from feeling fearful, we, Julie and I will never talk about um, social events. That's something we're always going to avoid. And I think you guys should avoid it too. I mean, Julie had a coaching client this morning. I mean, what, it's your story, so why don't you talk about it? Where well, she, I, I don't have the whole story because I haven't actually had that call with her yet. But they're, you know, they're really being affected by the whole, you know, demonstrations and I don't know, in some cases, riots. And I don't have the whole skinny, but really it comes down to, we talked about this a little bit last week, controlling your own three foot world, staying in your lane of what your expertise is. And this, in this case, of course, real estate, take care of yourself, your family, keep yourself safe, but then get to work because, you know, there's only so much that you can control, control what you can. And don't worry about the rest. But she thought she was supposed to come out with some sort like of... Like a, a public yeah, she was gonna, type announcement. Right. And, and, you know, honestly, a lot of that is kind of... I don't want to sound crass about it, but it is a little bit trendy to think that you're supposed to be doing... It would be right. easy to think that that's your job. And, and one of the things that we all well, see... You're, we're, I don't want to skip over it, this point, yeah. okay? Because I think... But we it's, not, made, it's not your job, though. I think we haven't made it clear. So she no. wanted to come out with a video where she was basically going to, you know, make some political statements. And that's what she was feeling pressured to do. Literally pressured by some people that work for her, maybe pressured by some of her neighbors. You know, you're a leader. You're, not, you're supposed to be coming out with some, you know, uh, you know big messaging, whatever. Okay? Yeah. So here's the... There, you can do that if you want to, listeners, but I'm going to tell you there's two sides to that. Number one is you're tribing up, which means when you tribe up, you're going to alienate the people that don't necessarily agree with your messaging. And Julie and I got this advice a long time ago from a guy named Jack Rosselli, and he told us never be a Republican, never be a Democrat, always be a Republican. I don't know. I don't know if he was saying he was a libertarian. I sort of doubt if he was, but what he was saying is don't be political because when you when you choose one side, right, you're, you can't win. You're, you know, it's like when you choose one side, you're also basically choosing the enemies of that side you're choosing. And then those people might be your enemies too, and that could have been your next listing. So in our opinion, and it's, I look, I'm not saying we're right about this because we have a lot of friends that came out with, you know, big sonorous, you know, public messaging, talking about how they're siding with this or the other thing. In our opinion, the move to make is just to focus on what you can control, to Julie's point. Those three things that we talk about on our podcast, control your physical environment, your uh, as literally your, um, you know, your living space, control your health, and control your finances. So those are the only three things you can really have control over. And give yourself permission, and there's nothing wrong with doing this, to completely unplug from all the news. Just go media free. Yeah. We have not watched the news and I don't even know how many years now. And what we do to come for these stories is we have Google do it for us. Julie and I set up Google Alerts and Google Alerts spits out a bunch of stories that might be relevant and we parse through them every morning and we agree which ones we're going to share with you guys. And that's how we go about doing it. But we do not go to any media outlets because even someone with the strongest mindset, the Buddha could go to CNN and Fox and walk away confused and thinking he needs to go make a sign and riot, yeah. right? I'm telling you guys, just do yourselves a favor because when you actually, if you want to really provide true leadership and you want to truly be of service to people, you have to be, of, you have to personally have your wits about you. And if you are so confused because of the unrest that's happening around the country, which by the way, Julie and I did predict it was going to happen. Mm -hmm. Would all these, you know, there's certain dominoes that always fall after some sort of pandemic or some sort of, uh, you know, social unrest is part of what happens. And it's not good. It's not bad. And again, I'm not going to talk about it. We're not going to talk about the politics. We're not going to, and neither should you. So please rise above it, observe it, don't participate in it. And remember your highest and truest purpose is being of service to other people, buying and selling real estate. In order for you to do that, you have to make sure that you know how to do that. And that's what our coaching company is all about. It's all about teaching you guys the skills you need in a market like this, which by the way, are going to be completely than, uh, different than the skills you needed in the previous market. I think you are all starting to sense that. We shared with you that report that CoreLogic came out with, which is in perfect lockstep with what Julie and I are predicting. Yep. This year was going to feel like a boom. Next year is going to feel like a bust. That's what they're predicting. I just summarized it or you can go read the long report. Um, and it's on our website, timandjulieharris.com. And that is the, that's the path that this market's going to follow. And there's really nothing. It's not a political thing. It just is a thing. 
Um, this isn't about you know who's going to be president or what the interest rates are. It's just about the natural cycle of how things come unraveled sometimes and then how they get rebuilt. This is just it's, it is what it is. You can't do anything about it. I can't do anything about it. There's no point in Julie and I virtue signaling about what we believe or what we think because we can't do anything about it. And there's no sense in us being part of that conversation. We have tens of thousands of you that listen to us on a regular basis. And we too have received pressure from very influential people asking us to side on one side or the other. And we're not going to do it. We'll never do it because that's not what our job is. Our job is to help you guys if you want to know what side we're on, we're on your side. We're on the agent side. We're agent-centric. We're always going to do what's best for you as individual practitioners. Does that make sense, Julie? Yeah, it absolutely does. So I think in summary, keep your own head screwed on straight. You know, people have bought and sold real estate. during Even, you know, back in World War II, people were buying and selling houses. 9-11, there were closings that week, you know. So you've got to keep on keeping on. All right, so speaking of what's happening in the world... The CFPB and CSBS issue statement on mortgage forbearance. Now, who are these people and what are they talking about? This affects all of you guys that either are pursuing a forbearance or already have those in place. The consumer, the CFPB is the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, and the other one is the Conference of State Bank Supervisors. They've just issued a joint statement regarding forbearance as it relates to the CARES Act. So just to remind you guys, the, the CARES Act stated that lenders must grant as long as two consecutive 180-day periods where you were not making mortgage payments, it wasn't affecting your credit, um, and that they had to grant that under the CARES Act. Now, so here's what this statement says. Servicers cannot make the determination that a borrower meeting the conditions of the CARES Act forbearance is ineligible to receive this assistance, nor can the servicers limit the amount of forbearance that's given. Even if the borrower is in delinquency, this may affect you or some of your sellers who are already delinquent or behind in their mortgages. Okay, now the joint statement also warned servicers about enacting additional interest fees or penalties. So no monkey business allowed from <laughs> the mortgage guys. Quote, beyond the amount scheduled or calculated as if the borrower made all contractual payments on time and in full under the terms of the mortgage contract. Also, servicers were warned against steering borrowers away from forbearance requests like, well, you could do that, but you have to have a balloon payment. So they're being smacked for that a little bit. Examiners will evaluate communications between borrowers and their servicers, including the servicer's communication of repayment options. Remember, you have four options, not just one, for legal compliance or resulting in consumer harm. They said a servicer that offers limited repayment options when others are reasonably available could be, depending on facts, uh, at risk of legal violation or causing consumer harm. So, so now this, they're being watched. So this information, what Julie just read to you, is going to be going on the free coaching site. Yep. So if you guys want to have that to share it with your real estate clients, um, and remember the free coaching site, we started this during uh, at the start of this pandemic and all the rest of the things that have happened um, after and all you've got to do if you want to join that free coaching site is just text the word survival to 31996. Just text the word survival to 31996 and we'll text you back a link where you can join the free coaching site. And one of the things you're entitled to as a member of the free coaching program is you are entitled to the daily semi-private coaching call. And a few of the days of the week, head coach Julie, who you're listening to right now, um, actually runs those calls herself. And this is our way of doing whatever we can to be of service to all of you guys and a really critical time and a, and a critical, you know, huge change that's happening in the economy and housing. Um, so, and there, you're also going to find our, our massive action plan there, the real estate treasure map. All these things are free. All you've got to do is text the word survival to 31996. All right, your turn. My turn? Um, I just right. told them that mortgagers are not going to be able to play monkey business. So that's that was my contribution. Now it's off to you for something maybe different. Or we can talk about the Airbnb uh, rental sites are seeing a surge. Or there's another one talking about maybe a V-shaped recovery from Housing Wire. Actually, that I, was a really analytical article. I'll tell you, right? I know. And by the way, the conclusion was it's, it's, it's not going to be a V-shape. It's going to be an M shape. It's like, all right, I got it. Too much. Why don't we, someone's <laughs> going to come up next week and say it's going to be a you know an X shape? I liked when they said it was a Nike swish. I know. Give me a break. All right, I'll tell you a fun story. It's not yes. real estate related, but then we'll go back to a real right. estate related. I so you guys do a real. Yep. All I right. So it. treasure chest worth millions. Found in the Rocky Mountain after decade-long search. I just thought this was a fun story. Um, a a decade-long search for hidden treasure hidden deep in the Rocky Mountains that led to multiple people's deaths is over. A man who hid the treasure announced. Uh, Forrest Fenn, a New Mexican art uh, dealer, revealed on Sunday that it, 
that his famed treasure was found, according to a post on his website that he confirmed to NBC News. The treasure placed in a 13th century Romanesque bronze chest was hidden between 2009 and 2010 uh, with an estimated $2 million in gold, jewelry, and gems, the 89-year-old said. Tucked somewhere in the mountains north of Santa Fe, the bounty was either in uh, New Mexico, Colorado, Wyoming, or Montana, but Fenn did not specify in his announcements exactly where it was found. Um, and he, he talks about a few of the – basically, he, he left clues everywhere. Um, I won't read you the rest it's of the article. Weird. Yeah, but it's awesome, though. It is. And so in 2017, uh, New Mexico urged people to stop looking for the treasure after someone died in the search. And one searcher died as recently as March. And But he said he did it. Uh, let me find out the explanation for why he did it. He basically said he hid the treasure because he wanted people to get out of their houses and get out, get back to nature. So he hid the t- uh, treasure as a way to get a bunch of people to actually, you know, do exactly wow. that. <laughs> Did, isn't you that could great? have just organized a weekend hike, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. But yeah, I mean, that's crazy. So yeah, there I you are. That, that was a fun or story. something completely different. Yes. Uh, let's totally do a real, story. Uh, real estate uh, one. Let's see. Well, here's a fun one. Airbnb joins vacation rental sites seeing surge in summer demand. That's the one Julie was talking about. And we're also, so there's um, five or six leading indicators, if you guys want to know what Julie and I look at, to try to really get a clear sense of what's happening in the economy. So what you got to think about is, like, for example, Airbnb. You also want to look at how hotels are doing. I actually think that's the article I'm referring to. It is. You, you want to look forward and see what other businesses that are uh, where people spend money um, because they're feeling confident, really. That's really what it is. You're going to look at car sales. You're going to look at, obviously, real estate sales. And if you look across the board at all the leading indicators of how people, like what people say is not as, um, I think, informative as what they spend their money on, right? Yeah, it's the actions that speak. That's right. So when you look at, regardless of what's going on in the news and how doomy and gloomy everyone wants you to believe the thing that your life is, People are not acting like that with what they do with their money. They're actually going out and they're doing things that would lead you to believe that they're actually feeling optimistic, which is fantastic. Um, Now, look, let's be clear. A lot of the uh, stock market and a lot of the optimism and the sense of a recovery that people are experiencing is because the government has pumped trillions of dollars into the economy. Without that having happened, there would be no, there would just be a huge chasm of all the, all the lost revenue that was essentially sucked out of the economy when we were all forced to close down for effectively 90 days, right? So and Julie and I want you to be hopeful, but also be very cautious because the reality of it is it's not just core logic. There's a lot of others of these leading reports that show people are optimistic for the short run, but not optimistic for the long run. And look, as long as there's high unemployment, which by the way, the unemployment rate as of last week actually dropped, which is amazing. Now, I read uh, something that was guessing, essentially an educated guess, that the reason the unemployment rate dropped is because a lot of businesses that took out PPP loans had to re-employ their people in order to have the loan turn into a grant. So you guys who are long-time listeners, you know what I'm talking about. So the PPP was, the original terms were 75% had to be used for hiring your employees back and not firing them. And then you do that within the first, I think it was 90 days of getting the loan, wasn't it? Uh, it was first in the first eight weeks, and now you've got, I think, double that. Yeah. That just changed last week. So yeah. people are already in play to be hiring people. But how many businesses hired uh, their right, people back? Right, because they were under the gun to get it over with. Right. And, you know, the other thing, Tim, is that when you see these claims of V-shaped recovery, and, of course, we want to be cautiously optimistic. I hope all of that's right. But we have to remember, like this Airbnb article was talking about, yes, the bookings are way up, but you have to remember that over the past two months, bookings were down 95%. So it's coming up from a pretty low level, right? Anything's going to be growth. Talking about airlines and, and um, you know, airfare and then these Airbnb bookings. Um, and how long, you know, will that be sustainable? I don't know. So- Interest rates on mortgages <laughs> are going to increase uh, and essentially because of the nature of what's happening in the economy. When the economy, it, you know, the way interest rates on mortgages uh, operate nowadays, it's not like it, it used to be where it's controlled by the, you know, LIBOR or tied to this rate or the other thing. Nowadays, basically, the Fed and indirectly is more in more control of mortgage interest rates. Long story short is that it looks like the mortgage interest rates are start, going to start creeping back up. So you better be aware. A matter of fact, I think now 
they went from the low threes and now they're in the high threes. They went up by like a third of a point or a half a point. Um, actually, Julie, if you want to share a next story with them, this one's more interesting than the last one I sent oh, you. Oh, okay. Hang on. I'm sorry. I'll read you. I'll get you started on it and you yep. can talk about it. All right. So here's a funny article. Now I want to share with you guys why I think this article is funny. So it says negative thinking linked to dementia and later life study fine. So if you click it, here's the funny part. The article was actually from CNN, the very <laughs> place where most people's <laughs> negative thinking the comes from. of such thinking. Don't you think that's funny? Uh, yes. Ironic. <laughs> Ironic. Oh, goodness. It's, <laughs> that is funny. Read the article, though. Uh, it says, negative thinking linked to dementia in later life study finds. Are you a pessimist by nature, a glass is half empty sort of person? That's not good for your brain. A new study found that repetitive negative thinking in later life was linked to cognitive decline and greater deposits of two harmful proteins responsible for Alzheimer's disease. We propose that repetitive negative thinking may be a new risk factor for dementia, said the lead author, Dr. So-and-so, a psychiatrist and senior research fellow in London. Okay, negative thinking behaviors such as rumination about the past, worry about the future, were measured in 350 people over the age of 55 for two years. About a third of the participants underwent a PET scan, that's positron emission tomography brain scan, to measure deposits of those proteins. Uh, the scans... uh, Julie skipped over trying to pronounce the names of the proteins, all listeners. All right, all right, then. I was trying to shorten it. <laughs> I'm not going to tell Tau you. Tau and beta amyloid, two okay. proteins. There you go. That was easy. It wasn't too bad. No. Uh, which cause Alzheimer's disease, <laughs> the most common type of dementia. Okay, so the, what they're showing you here is that there is a an actual chemical reaction happening. That's right. For lack of a better way to explain it. Um, when you have these negative... It releases, uh, repetitive thoughts. It, it, releases, it, it actually literally is bad for your brain. Right. It releases a certain, I read the whole article, Jules. It actually releases a certain, you know, there's a, a chemical release that basically, you know, harms those two aneroids or whatever they're called. And that basically causes, uh, they're believing that is one of a, the predeterminants of dementia. So that's pretty fascinating, I think. So to actually find uh, a direct, uh, not woo-woo link yeah. between, you know, dementia and negative thinking is pretty profound. Well, so let's look at, it says looking at the bright side, previous research supports this hypothesis we just talked about. People who look at life from a positive perspective have a much better shot at avoiding death from any type of cardiovascular risk than pessimistic people, according to a 2019 study. In fact, the more positive the person, the greater the protection from heart attacks, stroke, and any cause of death. It's not just your heart protected by a positive outlook. Prior research found a direct link between optimism and other positive health attributes like healthier diet, exercise, stronger immune system, better lung function, amongst others. Uh, more likely to exercise, have better diets. And, you know, when I read this stuff, I always think about coaching clients. The ones that, like, exercise and eat right generally don't have the same kind of mindset issues if you, if as you the have, ones that don't. I mean, it makes well, sense, right? Well, but it, it's true because if you have a positive, if you basically are an optimist or force yourself to be if you're not a natural optimist, you, it's going to translate into all aspects of your life. You can't, for example, be an optimist and essentially not be somebody who it has good health. I mean, generally speaking, yeah. those things are going to correlate, but also even good financial health. For sure. You can't be an optimist, generally speaking, and be an absolute, you know, Dilbert when it comes to your finances. Nope, you can't. So Julie has got to rush off to PC. Do you, you want? I, I have a real uh -oh. quick things I love because this is just interesting to watch. I, I get, uh, you know, in the interest of expanding your thinking and knowing about other things, I get emails from the auction house Bonhams, B O N H A M S. I believe they are British. Okay, so they send me something, 10 important manuscripts for modern times. They have something from Isaac Newton. They have Mark Twain's Wisdom of the Ages. These are original copies. They even had The Essence of Renaissance by Plato. Like you can buy this stuff. That's crazy. And you know, they're not gazillions of dollars, but I just find it interesting to look at those things because I'm a total nerd bag. When I'm wanna, not looking at aliens. Do you wanna quickly tell them about that book you're reading? Oh, uh, yes. It's called Lady in Waiting by Anne Glenn Conan. Tell them about that story you told um, me about um, the uh, the book that was... Is... Oh, yeah. Okay. So uh, she's a, a lady in waiting basically is somebody who takes after the royal family. Okay. Um, and so these are also aristocrats by their own right and often have their own castles and land and stuff like that. So um, after World War II, a lot of those big properties fell into disrepair because... People had been at war. They weren't being taken care of. Some of them requisitioned too. by the army and yeah. they were taxed and, you know, things got ugly. So what did her family do? They sold an original book that Da Vinci, had, like some of Da Vinci's, basically his journal of stuff that he was studying. 
And uh, Bill Gates owns it now. It sold for $30.1 million. It's the most valuable book in the world. But this book had been in her Rough family time. for like for 400, 400 years. years. Yeah, I mean, that's it's horrible to think about, but... I mean, times are tough even when you own castles, right? Well, but that's the that's the cor- that's yeah. the parallel because that yeah. was a time after World War II, and then the government was trying sure. to the government. The reason that a lot of those aristocrats had to give up those big estates is because the government passed a, a really onerous tax on those yep. big estates, and they couldn't afford to pay the taxes. And those estates used to be actually big, large working farms. They were like cities, basically. Right. You know that your tenant farmers, yeah, they had their own house, but they also were contributing, and everybody was working together. So. It's just, it's interesting history. And she had such a fascinating life. I mean, she hung out with, um, you know, Queen Elizabeth and Princess Margaret. And they talks about them being kids together. And it's just cool. So I got to go to Premier. All right. So those of you who are in Premier Coaching, make sure you attend the call daily live with Julie. So guys, you can tell we're trying to bring a little bit of more of a lighthearted nature to these daily podcasts because we want to give you guys a reprieve, a break. A checkout from the insanity that has become normal. And so we're going to continue to basically talk about things that we hope will be of interest to you. Um, And what we're trying to do is expand your thinking. Lifelong learning is definitely a key uh, to overall health and happiness. But it also opens your mind to the realization that sometimes you need to be introspective about how you're actually thinking and how you're considering things. I, I personally, like Julie's reading this book, and I read a bunch of, I listen to mostly podcasts and I listen to books. And I look for things that I know are going to be in conflict with something I believe to be true. And now, right, why would someone want to use their free time for doing that? Because it makes me smarter. It makes me more objective. It makes me, you know, the older I've gotten, the more I realize I have this tendency, and all of us do, right, to want to believe you know what you know, and that's it. And right, like, this is my opinion. It's never going to change. Well, I don't want to be like that. I don't want to be somebody that basically has got a, such a closed mind to open to 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 new ideas. Some of you are watching what's going on right now in the news and you're watching what's going on in our society and you're taking a stance that's not very well reasoned. And I'm not, again, I'm not throwing down on either side, but what you're doing is you're using your previous software uh, to basically make decisions that might not be, the software might not be serving you anymore. So what you need to seriously consider doing is be objective. Don't lay down your, you know, for either side, be optimistic that you have the ability to think objectively about it and listen to what other people say. Yes, I know it's hard to listen to what other people are saying when you have preconceived notions about the people that are saying what they're saying. Those are your biases. Those are the things that you need to set aside so that you can listen. Because whether you like it or not, everything's always changing. You're always changing. Society's always changing. Our economy's changing. I mean, look at all the changes that all of us have been forced to endure for the last six months. It's extraordinary. And it literally is extraordinary. What we're seeing now as far as the protests and the riots and all the rest of it, those things are all, obviously, they were triggered by one horrible event. But those are also the ramifications of what's happening with social unrest from essentially quarantining people. There are a lot of people that just went a little bit of, you know, that went a loopy and they want to basically essentially feel free again. They want to express their freedom. They don't want to feel, you know, imprisoned anymore. And that's what part, a good bit of what's going on. It's all very predictable behavior if you study history. And and then, you know, we're sharing with you articles about essentially, um, you know, Airbnb is starting to say, look, we have a huge increase in people looking for rentals. You're going to we're going to share with you other stories like that. People are burned out for galaxy fatigue. Right. So you're going to see a lot of people spending money and all these, you know, celebrations of essentially, well, finally, we're free again. Right. Some version of that. I want you to appreciate it, partake in it. I want you to understand that there's a good chance that this recovery and feels wonderful is not going to last. Even if we're wrong, the steps that you'll take in anticipation of it not lasting will put you in a better position. So let's just say, for example, something unprecedented happens. And as Julie and I have been hoping for, this is 2020 won't be remembered for the year of insanity that it sort of feels like it is, but it'll be remembered for the year of miracles. Maybe there can be amazing things that happen for the next six months and we're all going to have this conversation, you know, oh my gosh, how can you have this six months of so many things changing and look at all the wonderful things that happened as a result. And, you know, who knows, right? I'm just trying to be an optimist. I'm trying to help you guys realize that we're not in a downward death spiral as a country 
Things go up, things go down, things are always changing is the point of it. But what we want you to do is remember, ultimately, you're responsible for yourself. You're responsible for what you think. You're responsible for the actions that you take. Those are your two things, right? So we want you right now to anticipate that at the end of the year, the economy is going to go through what will be a noticeable uh, recession, depression, or whatever. Eventually, the Fed is not going to be able to continue to essentially pump the money back into the economy. What we're seeing now in stock prices and what we're seeing now in a lot of other things is basically money that's being injected into the economy from the Federal Reserve to make it so that there is no crash. When does that run out? I don't know. It will, though. It cannot last forever. And then at some point when those you know training wheels start to be pulled off, when the country stops being all nerfed up and the economy is no longer nerfed up, then you're going to start seeing things come unraveled. Anticipate that happening. Don't have that have an adverse effect on your ability to help people make money now, but anticipate that happening. So cut your expenses, save your money. We've told you how to do all the, you know, leverage all the government bailout programs. It's free. We give the information to you for free. Just text the word survival to 31996. Now, let's say it's six months from now. It's the end of the year. It's around the holidays. You've put your stuff in forbearance. You've done all the things we asked you to do. You're in the process of learning or you pretty much are confident now how to go after business without having to buy leads. All the things we teach you in our coaching program. Okay, you're there. And in, in when the economy, uh, if it improves, if everyone, you know, if Julie and I are wrong and other economists are wrong and things actually turn around, no harm done. You're actually in a better position, Right. You're, you've saved some money. You're on, you're on firm footing as far as finances. Everything's wonderful. Everything's great. You guys listening? Now, if things get a lot worse, then you're also great. But what you're doing now, so many of you, is you're doing nothing. Doing nothing won't work. Doing nothing is not sustainable. You have to absolutely put your own mask on first. And we're going to tell you exactly how to do that. Just text the word survival to 31996. Guys, it's free. The coaching program's free. And no, this is not our you know premier coaching program this is a whisper of what the premier coaching program offers but it's the very thing that many of you need to prepare for what is coming next in our opinion right and if we're wrong well great you're over prepared no downside there so hopefully you guys are getting a lot from our new the format of being a little bit more i think lighthearted on our podcast we're doing that intentionally to give you guys a little bit of a break so we can sit around and have a cup of coffee in the middle of the day with you and sort of enjoy some lighthearted banter and talking about maybe, you know, obviously primarily real estate things, but also things that are a little bit bizarre. If you guys have any other little bizarre stories you'd like to share with us, do you think the wider audience might be interested in, please feel free to email me at tim at timandjulieharris.com. Just send me a link. Um, we always appreciate your feedback. Hey, and listen, everyone, thank you for continuing to make this their number one listen to daily podcast for real estate in the nation. We're quite confident of, that it's in the nation. We don't know about globally. It might very well be globally as well. We, we literally have tens of thousands of you that listen on a regular basis. The podcast has been downloaded in just the last recording period, something like 8 million times. So, you know, we are doing the best we can to be of service to you guys during this crazy time. Please use the information we're giving to you to, first of all, take care of yourself and then to help as many other people as you can. If you guys need us for anything at any time, you know how to get a hold of us. In the meantime, have a fantastic day and we'll talk with you on the show tomorrow or anytime. You can listen to our podcast anytime. Please do. Um, your homework is please share this podcast with as many different agents as you can. Give us a five-star rating on iTunes. A great review would be nice. Help us get the word out that the highest and truest purpose of everyone on this planet is being of service to other people and a real estate license and doing what you're doing now, at the, in the, especially in this point in history, you've never been so needed. So make the most of that, guys. Have a fantastic day. This program has been a presentation by Tim and Julie Harris Real Estate Coaching. For more information on our real estate coaching and training programs, visit our website at timandjulieharris.com. Remember to tune in weekdays at noon for upcoming shows. And until next time, thank you for listening to Real Estate Coaching Radio with Tim and Julie Harris. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com. <laughs>